Hi, you are listening to Creatrix Culture. I am your host, Sarah Wolf, and today we are with Tim James, and he is the founder and CEO of Chemical Free Body. And I'm really excited about today because one of my favorite topics is nutrition and healing the body naturally. And that's been a mission of mine for a very long time within myself and getting it out to the people around me and on putting my tentacles out on larger scales. So he is gonna come and sit with us right now, which is so exciting and tell us his story. And we're just gonna dive into, into the wonderful world of healing the body with and detoxing naturally. Hi, Tim. Hey, Sarah, thanks for having me on the show today. I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, I am, we are, now, we are now sitting together virtually. Yes. <laughs> He's in Oregon and I'm in Los Angeles. So this is technology is amazing. We don't have to fly around anymore, you know? Well, at least we're in the same time zone. That doesn't matter. But... Yeah. So why don't we just jump right in? I would love to hear your story. I, I read a little bit about it on your site and your pages and stuff. And um, I love hearing stories when people take the initiative and take life seriously when the body's showing them signs that things aren't going well and it's really cool when people like really take that and then find ways to <clears throat> to heal themselves and and change their lives so I, I really i really honor people that that take that because it's not an easy task so you can just take off running with that one okay awesome well um just to give your listeners a background i grew up in eastern oregon i'm back home now which is cool helping on the ranch, taking care of mom and dad and just kind of getting things fixed up around here. They can't do anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I grew up hunting and fishing. I was a redneck, um, farming, Her Hereford cattle, grass hay. I, I put myself through college cutting firewood. I played baseball at a high level for 30 years. So I was an athlete. And I was, so I was really into being competitive and having every advantage I could physically over the competition for strength and recovery. Um, but what happened was, is fast forward, age 37, I found myself 42 pounds overweight. I had a huge patch of eczema on my left knee. It would crack and bleed and stick to my wool pants. I was a financial mm -hmm. advisor at the time. And um, then my elbows got eczema too, and they started cracking and bleeding. And I couldn't wear white shirts anymore as a financial advisor because it would stain them and they would stick. It was just terrible. Um, so I had to use darker colored shirts. Um, and that was okay, I guess. Um, I was eating Tums and Rolaids 24-7 because I had acid reflux, heartburn really bad. Um, and then it actually got worse. I had a, I started like, like when I'd go to the bathroom, when I poop, I had blood come out and that went on for like two and a half years. And I was kind of like, kind of a typical guy, like egos in the way and like, Oh, I hope that goes away. And I really didn't tell anybody about it, you know? Uh -huh. So I'd go to the doctor and they would want to get me on Prilosec and give me these weird medications. And, uh, one of the medications I remember had, uh, one of the side effects was rectal bleeding. I'm like, I already have that. Like, why would I take this? <laughs> So, um, and what I found out is I've done a lot of, I've told my story a lot of times. There's a lot of people out there that are bleeding rectally when they poop. Like it's a, it's a big problem. Yeah. So, and their guts just jacked up, which I found out later. Mm -hmm. So, um, low energy, you know, athlete, but now low energy can't even run around a track once. Um, I'm, I got wife, kids, mortgage, doing all that stuff. Lots of stress, three offices that I help run, uh, client appointments with and, um, I just felt my health was just going downhill. Um, and then on a vacation to Peru, uh, my wife and I went down there. Her dad was a medical doctor, uh, ran a big clinic in Lima. First time he'd ever taken a vacation, 30 years. Wow. Kind of remarkable. He just at work. I mean, he had a bunch of clients. Mm -hmm. And then when he got this opportunity to run the hospital, the clients wouldn't let him fire them. So he was like helping be a doctor to all these people and running a full-time hospital. So it was kind of wow. crazy. So he never had a day off. This was his first time for vacation. We settled into this place south of Ecuador called Tumbes. It was a beautiful beach, private little resort thing out in the middle of nowhere. And after a few days of paradise, um, I didn't, I wasn't feeling that good. Then we went on a fishing trip out in the sea and I was doubled over in pain. And they're like, oh, you have motion sickness. I'm like, no, I, I fished in the sea. I hunt and fish all the time. Like, I don't, I don't have any issues like that. And uh, he checked me out when we got back. He's like, oh my God, we got to get you to the hospital. You need surgery. I'm like, what? So we hustled down to the airport and we missed the one plane flight out of that town because it's very remote by like 20 30 minutes so he's mm. like we can't wait you could die i'm like this isn't good like yeah. i'm on a vacation like it's supposed to be fun we planned this out for a year and just in the beginning of it it's like i'm you know so we rented a van and they drove me six hours through the middle of the night down the, this bumpy road 
the coastline of Peru. And every bump was like somebody punching me or stabbed me with a knife or an ice pick in the gut. It was very painful. Uh, it was the worst experience in my entire life. And not even close. There's nothing that's even remotely close to that. Yeah. When I got there, I was so exhausted. I was soaking wet. I'd sweated so much from the ride and the pain that my paper money and my wallet was wet. Just to give people an idea. It was bad. And he took me in the hospital there in Peora. It's a big city there, um, about six hours away from Tumbes. And I'm in the examination table room looking up and the, the lights full of, bu there's bugs flying all over the place. I mean, we're in third world deal, all the utensils and stuff and the scalpels, everything looked like from the forties and fifties. It was like pretty old school. And he didn't want to do, have them do the surgery there. Probably he just wanted his surgeons cause he had a top, you know, notch medical facility in Lima. Mm -hmm. So he had them dope me up, which you're not supposed to do. Put me on a commercial plane flight, flew me to Lima. And I went into a taxi and they got out of the taxi and they threw me on a gurney right into right into surgery. So I learned a couple of things in that. Number one, I don't ever want to have surgery again. It was freaking scary. I realized that my life was out of control. Thank God that this is where Western medicine shines though. They can, you know, they can save lives with this type of stuff, but for chronic care, it's like, you know, chronic issues, it's a complete fail. And people don't realize a lot of them that Western medicine was born out of war. It was crisis management when you get shot or you get a leg blown off or get shrapnel or something like that. Mm -hmm. They can save your life. But when it comes to these chronic diseases, it's, it's, it's really a complete fail. Not the doctors and nurses fault. Um, it's just, you know, it's kind of kind of run by big pharma and, 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 you know, they just yep. want to sell their synthetic drugs. Yep. So that's what I learned there. The second thing was, is that my poor health doesn't affect just me. It affects everybody else around me. Cause you know, not only did I ruin the vacation for me, but for my wife and her dad, he ended yeah. up back in the hospital. So that's a very important message that your poor health doesn't affect just you. It affects everybody else around you. And it might not be today, but it could be tomorrow, next week, next year, you know, and with all the rise in dementia and Alzheimer's and memory loss, it's massive burden mm -hmm. on, on the, on the kids when, when you don't know who you are. I mean, I just left uh, coaching a gal that had breast cancer and both her mother and father, like 89 and 92, I mean, they would ask you a question and one minute later, ask you the same question. One minute later, ask you the same question. And it's kind of, you know, funny for a few minutes, but when you have to live with it day in and day out, then they get very angry and then they just take off on walks and you got to go grab them and bring them back in. And like one day her mom was like three miles down the road by the middle school and she's like, you know, old and not mm -hmm. didn't take care of her health. And like, it's like, where's, I mean, we're, there's five of us driving all over the town trying to find her, you know? Yeah, it's, it's it's this is the type of stuff. It's like, it's not cool. It's just not cool. So um, what ended up happening was I still didn't know what to do. I mean, I tried high fat, low fat, high carb, low carb, high protein, low protein, all this five meals a day stuff. I kind of get results in some stuff. I actually tried juicing for a while, but I was juicing a lot of like apples and beets and the typical carrots and lots of sugar. And yep. I didn't really lose any weight. So I just, you know, after a month or two, my juicer was under the cupboard. not using yeah. it which is pretty typical for most folks. Um, and then um, uh, a buddy on my baseball team got diagnosed with cancer, uh, Clay Mahoy. And he, lost, he, he you know, went through surgery and chemo and all that stuff. And, and we lost him. And uh, he mm -hmm. left three little boys behind from ages 6 to 17 with no insurance. So we did a fundraiser. And then right after that, my buddy Charles got diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia at age 43, which is supposedly an incurable blood cancer. This was 2010, his diagnosis. And he said, hey, man, uh, I got cancer and I got this thing and they don't have a cure for me. And they just basically said, wait and see. And when it gets bad, we'll hit you with chemo. And then, uh, but after it'll knock it back a little bit, when it comes back the second time, there's really not much we can do except we're hopefully we'll find a cure before you die. And my Charles is like an entrepreneur. He's like the make it happen type of guy. He's like, I'm not going to sit around and wait to die. So he wanted to get busy living which is what he did. He found the Hippocrates Health Institute in West Palm Beach, Florida. I don't know if you're mm -hmm. familiar with them. Mm -mm. Started by a gal named Ann Wigmore. It's one of it's the oldest like alternative health institute in the world. And I think they've been around like 70 plus years. Oh wow! And this gal was from Lithuania. She couldn't speak much English, but um, in her 50s, she was diagnosed with colon cancer and she healed herself with lawn grass and herbs. Her grandmother was the village doctor in Lithuania. So she learned a lot from her and went back to nature and healed herself and, and then started healing other people. And the whole institute, people just kind of rallied around her and the, the brains and the money and everything kind of came around her. And, and um, they've been healing that people, well, they don't heal anybody. 
they help people heal themselves. Yeah. That's how it works. We can't heal. There's nobody healers. is not, it's not the case. You, you can help people get out of their own way and heal themselves, inspire yep. them, give them permission slips, however you want to call it, show them the way. Mm-hmm. I look at myself now as a general contractor of health. I just kind of help them organize their team and do basic fundamental things to, you know, get the body back into balance or homostasis. Is that what you call it? If you want it the technical term, but, um, so he's like, Charles breaks the news to him and he's like, dude, will you go with me? My wife can't get away to go. And I was like, yeah, dude, whatever you need. So remember I'm the redneck from Eastern Oregon, you know, shooting deer and elk and chuckers and pheasants eating all this meat and all this stuff. And, and mm-hmm. on the plane flight there, he's like, Oh yeah, by the way, there's no meat. It's, um, plant-based and there's no meat, no dairy, no salt, no sugar. There's nothing cooked over 150, 15 degrees. It's all sprouts and living foods and, you know, stuff like that. And I'm just like, no meat. You know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm freaking out because the way I was raised is that you have to have meat or you're going to die. Right. You have to have meat or your muscles are going to fall off. You have yeah. to, and it's kind of almost like part of being a man, right? right? All the movies show it, like eat a big steak and drink some whiskey when things are down, you know, it's this stupid societal programming. Yeah. So, so I'm like, uh, okay. And if it wasn't for him, I don't, and his, you know, I thought thinking I was going to lose another friend. I probably wouldn't have went there. Day one, uh, my acid reflux was gone. Um, I went through a detox period, night sweats, was irritable. Um, I had a metallic taste coming out of my tongue because uh, I went from basically the standard American diet to eating like a chipmunk, mm-hmm. all these natural things, wheatgrass shots and all this. And, um, a lot of kale. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of kale. They had lots of sprouts. It's a, it's yeah. a, they call it the living food program. They're, I think their motto is like, it's not the food in your life. It's the life in your food. Mm-hmm. how much food are you eating that's actually alive like every single other living creature on this planet besides you know like maybe buzzards and dung beetles so i don't want that's the company i don't want to be in right <laughs> so yeah. anyway so the first class because besides being an institute where you you know you get checked in there's nurses and blood tests and therapies it's actually a school so you get 40 hours mm-hmm. of lectures and education a week so you're going back to school and like what's going on with the body how to work they give you they kind of hand you the owner's manual and you learn all this stuff while you're going through this and it's all making sense. And what's cool about it is you get first person experience. Nobody, I don't care how many degrees somebody has right now. Nobody can tell me how good I felt after I went through this process. So, and I hadn't felt this good in years. So basically the first class was called internal awareness. And this very fit doctor comes out. He just turned 50 that day. He was actually named Dr. Scott Josephson. And um, I thought he was maybe 40. I mean, Everybody that had been working there 10, 20 years, they looked about 10, 20 years younger than everybody else. And I was like, wow, this is wow. These people are crazy good looking. I mean, they just, their skin's amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you know, success leaves clues. I learned that from Tony Robbins. <laughs> and um, so, but I'm, I'm thinking, how could this little podunk place help people with cancer? I mean, come on, they got race for the cure and billions of dollars is being spent. We have our best minds on it, right? So I'm taking notes and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very skeptical person. I don't really trust much. And but um, I start talking to all these people, and these people were a lot of them had come back a second time. They were recovered, and they from these catastrophic deals, and they were bringing friends and family members. And and I was like, my God, it's like these people aren't lying to me. So we're doing this internal awareness class, and this doctor comes out, and he basically is just trying. He teaches us from the time you eat food, starts in the mouth, and time exits the body. What happens? Amazing class. The takeaway was that the average person has six to twelve pounds of impacted fecal material in the colon. We, and he looked at me and he's like, Tim, you, ha- you have 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. If you wow. ever want to get healthy, truly healthy, you've got to clean it out. Mm-hmm. So the pathway of elimination is the like, first step. It's the driving, your, your gut and organ systems are the driving engine of your life. So if it's polluted with funk and gunk and junk, even if you had one pound of that nasty crap in there, you want to get it out, right? So he was trying to sell us on a colon hydrotherapy session or clonic. Are you familiar with those? Yes. Yep. Okay, so for the listeners, if there's anybody here that wasn't familiar with clonics, I wasn't. Uh, you basically, it's it's water therapy, colon, hydro, or water therapy. You sit on a tube rectally, and water gently goes in and out of your colon for an hour, and it cleans it out. Now, it sounds simple. It makes sense. You got a mess in there. You want to clean it up, but I was no way I was doing it. Like, I'm like, elbow Charles. I like, hey, dude, I came here from, flew across the country to help you, but I'm not doing that deal. That's weird. Yeah. These people are weird here. <laughs> so, um, but the doctor was very smart. He showed four vir- virtual colonoscopies, three of unhealthy people that had been on the standard American diet. And one of a person had been on this Hippocrates living food lifestyle for a few years. Well, the first one was a woman that was 24. She had Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid disorder. And she mm-hmm. also had uh, thrush, which is a yeast infection. And inside of her colon, it was white and yellow, like 
You wouldn't expect that. You think there's brown waste matter. No, hers is mostly white and yellow from all that yeast overgrowth. Wow. And I was just like, well, this is terrible looking. Then they went to a 65 year old male with colon cancer and uh, and he had parasites inside of his colon was black as night. It was like black tar with white worms crawling around. And I'm just like, I'm just sitting there going, what? And, And then the doctor turns around, he goes, now look, these parasite deals are not a third world affair. Far from it. He goes, mm-hmm. when your immune system is down, the harmful organisms come in, and this is one of them. Easily, easily, over 50% of you are going to see these parasites exiting your body through your stool. And actually, the, you'll see some of you will see them exiting through the skin. And I'm just like, oh my God, now he's really got my attention, right? And um, he said, he goes, but there's also microscopic parasites that you can't see. And he said, all of them are drinking your drink, eating your food. And they're urinating and defecating and you creating more acid. And then they're having sex and having thousands of eggs. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> so now I'm like really freaked out. Yeah. And then when he went to a 45-year-old female with breast cancer and her gut was jacked up. She had like colitis or Crohn's or diverticulosis or something like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, her gut was jacked up. Um, inside her colon was black like tar. There was some brown stuff in there. And then they went to the healthy person and... The inside lining of their colon was like pink and clean and the blood vessels were in there. There was brown waste matter. But my, the point of the whole thing was is that the internal terrain of the healthy individual versus the three that were unhealthy, completely different. Like mm-hmm. it was completely different. And that's when the light bulb went off in my head. I'm like, oh, my God, this is an inside job. And I need to get busy learning how to clean up my gut, my organs, and nourish it and do all this stuff and take care of these little intestinal uh, things called villi. They are these hair-like structures that line mm-hmm. the intestinal line. He said, you have to take really good care of your villi. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be my villi's best, best friend. Mm-hmm. And that's what we did. We, we followed what we were doing in there. And, and the next day at lunch, there was a woman have at lunch and she did, she had a parasite crawling out of her eye at lunch. I was like, Hey, you got a parasite crawling out your eye. Stop it. And she's like, Oh my God. And I said, don't get it in your salad, you know? So, um, I saw it and she was right. And people had it mostly coming out of their stools and stuff. So the next day, um, I signed up for the colon hydrotherapy thing after that was virtual colonoscopies because I was going to say they, they, he literally scared the SHIT out of me. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, I got, <laughs> so I went in the next day. They weighed me. They did the colon hydrotherapy session, or I did it and for an hour, and they weighed me again. I dropped 10 pounds of impacted fecal material in one one-hour session. And the record in 2011, I think they had about 600,000 people through their door at that point, so over half a million. The record was one lady. 27 pounds she dropped in one one hour session. Think about that. 27 pounds of impacted funk and gunk and junk was inside of this woman. Oh my and, gosh. Um, same thing with John Wayne and, and Elvis, you know, they had, yeah. they had impacted colons, right? So yeah. it's, it's kind of simple. Like if, if the car ain't running right, you don't just put better fuel in it. You got to take it in the shop and probably flush out the engine, the transmission mm-hmm. fluid, and then put good spark plugs and fuel filters and then maintenance that sucker. So they, that educational component gave us the owner's manual of the human body and they walked us through it and gave us the food and showed us that there was food prep classes and sprout growing classes and all kinds of cool stuff. And I became an avid sprouter. Um, I was a farmer. So the growing stuff was second nature right. and I love it. So anyway, what happened was um, I woke up out of that detox fog and the next day, and I, I, I literally felt like I was 18 again. My arms were tingling with energy. My mental clarity, my brain was back. And I looked at Charles and said, dude, I was like, do you feel as good as I do? And he's like, yeah. I said, we literally discovered the fountain of youth. Like this isn't woo. This is what everybody wants. It's just learning how to deal with your stress, Mm -hmm. you know, breath work, these types of things, walking in nature, getting the toxic chemicals out of the gut, the fat and the muscle tissue that are polluting us. And all people have to do is look up the umbilical cord study. So type in when you're done with this podcast, type in umbilical cord chemical umbilical cord chemical you'll see the studies going back to 2005 that show that every single child being born today they're finding they look for like 400 chemicals they find 250 and um 180 cause cancer in humans and they're in our babies every single child being born and that's when it hit me i'm like oh my god the older we are we're all polluted because the older we are the more time we've had to bioaccumulate these toxins from the air we breathe the water we drink Mm -hmm. the food we eat the cosmetics the sodium laurel sulfate cancer causing shampoos and the yep. armful of swallowed toothpaste please contact the poison control center yeah, why would right. you put that like, toothpaste in your mouth that makes no sense right? but i did and i went home yeah. and guess what that's my freaking first ingredient in my shampoo is sodium laurel sulfate a known carcinogen i'm like how is this even legal right after i learned all this stuff i was so i started buying healthier stuff 
Um, and the cool story was, is that Charles did heal himself in a little over two years. He, we ran a marathon and six months later, he was technically cancer free and no chemo, no surgery, no nothing. And I lost in 60 days. My 42 pounds was gone. Uh, eczema on both of my elbows gone. Other skin issue in my shoulder gone. Eight months later, the, the huge patch of eczema in my knee was gone. And I went from larges and extra large shirts down to smalls and mediums, just like high school and college again. And here I am 11, 12 years later. I'm actually healthier now than I was when I was 37, you know, at right. 49, I'm trail running four to seven miles twice a week and doing yoga and all these kinds of cool things. And mm -hmm. my son wanted me to go like, say, Hey dad, you want to go surfing? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And I was able to go surfing with him. I was able to get up half the time and surf. It was fun. I'm like, Oh my God, I want to get aboard and do this. This is fun. I mean, I'm not really happy about sharks, but other than right. that, I'm pretty excited about surfing, you know, yeah. the water and stuff. And do you have a lot of sharks up there? Ah, uh, there's a few, I guess. Oh, okay. I mean, very few people, I guess, get bit by them. But I'm yeah. just like, I still think about it, you know. Right, <laughs> like, totally. I don't want to get snapped by a shark, especially after I've worked so damn hard on getting right? my health back. <laughs> yeah, like that would suck. But um, anyway, so you know, the cool thing was, is Charles was able to see his son graduate high school. He was able to go to father son weekend, and he went from bankruptcy cancer to um, the thriving business, um, totally healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, he he's gonna be playing. He started a band. I started playing guitar three years ago. So he's going to be playing at a 4th of July festival thing at a private party. And I'm going to bring my stuff and I'm going to jump in there and play a few songs with him, you know, and he could be dead, right? I yeah. could have him or I could be dead. So yeah. it's just really exciting to understand that good health is not complicated. It's really simple. It's really about just understanding that we're stressed out and we have to have habits in our life to mitigate that. We are polluted beyond all doubt through our gastrointestinal tract and on a cellular level. We got to yep. learn how to clean that, detox that crap out and keep it out because we're always retoxing from the air, water, food and all that stuff. Yep. And then we have to replace the nutrients. You know, 85% of the nutrients are farmed out of the soil. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was like bad because we're running around on 15% fuel. But then I learned about like tilling. Now we till our soil, all the farmers around, we all till our soil, right? But in nature, you don't till the soil. What happens when you till the soil? Well, you kill the soil microbiome. Right. bacteria yeah well, those same bacteria the same ones a lot of them are the same ones in our gut those bacteria it's like a whole world going on down in there and when you till them up you kill them one of their jobs is to transport nutrients from the soil in through the root system of the plant they're like taxi mm. cabs bringing it in well if you whack them with tilling a lot of them they're not able to bring the 15 percent that's left very much of it into the root system so you end up with weak soil weak plants or weak animals that eat them and then if you eat a plant or an animal weak people Yep. So we really have to really focus on that soil component and the soil microbiome. That's why permaculture or, you know, wild growing is kind of, the, we, we got to get back to the future, you know, kind well, of. But you know, what's funny is the episode that's going to be coming out before yours is I sat down with a friend of mine that does a whole thing about permaculture. So this is actually the lineup that's happening is going to be really great timing because yeah. Yeah. She, and you can, she you goes can really this. in depthly about how important permaculture is and, and being able to grow anywhere. She's literally growing out in Joshua tree in the land from nothing, just dirt and like growing vegetation and, and, and really like working the land to be able to have greens and, and, and produce in it. So it's really, yeah, cool. it's really important. You know, even the native American Indians here knew it. They have a, something called three sisters. We actually have a mountain called three sisters in a town over in central Oregon. Mm -hmm. and what that refers to is they used to, they'd plant their corn, right? But then they'd plant squash around the bottom and the squash would kind of cover the ground with leaves and keep weeds out and keep the ground cooler. And then they'd also plant beans and the beans would crawl up the corn. And then those beans would, um, because that's what legumes do, they fix nitrogen. So the nitrogen from the beans would feed the corn and the squash. So it's like three sisters. So in nature, there's, it's a very diverse deal and it all works together. Um, it's when you disturb, anytime man gets involved and messes around with things, that's where we kind of get off. Yep. Right. So with their, with their meaty little fingers, just like completely not trusting that. Yeah. Nature and mother earth has had it all figured out. And then we come in and just, you know, think we're doing better or bigger or whatever. And continue. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll genetically modify this stuff to under the guise of we, we can't, we have to feed the world and it's BS. When I learned that when you genetically modify an organism, you disrupt its metabolism. And then instead of producing glutathione, which is what our body needs, it starts producing formaldehyde. Mm. Um, and mm. I already know people are getting enough formaldehyde from their carpets. And even if they have a HEPA filter or a carbon filter, it's not getting out that specific 
VOC or volatile organic compound. Uh -huh. You need you need a zeolite filter matrix or something like that. So I, I have like a carbon zeolite matrix and the HEPA all in one unit and it gets that out. But I best thing to do is just get rid of your freaking carpets. They're nasty anyway. Oh, and you're yeah. basically embalming yourself. Think about it. we do 20,000 breaths a day and you're breathing in formaldehyde and you're eating it. And that's why the morticians are telling us that the older folks that are eating a lot of these types of foods and crappy food and processed irradiated stuff, they're kind of already embalmed. Wow. They don't have to do a whole lot of embalming nowadays. Wow. Yeah. I live in an apartment that's all carpet and I, every day, like I, I wish I could get it changed to hardwood floors, but the building won't do it. Um, yeah. Cause well, I, there's I, a, that we have that air purification system on our site under, I think it's under air purifier. So okay. I, I, I vetted a whole bunch of them and this one's like a little industrial unit for home and office. A lot of clinics use it for in like dental offices and stuff like that, but it's a, it's a powerhouse. And it's also one of the best ones I found for wildfires. Oh, wow. And it's pretty awesome. So my, my air smells like fresh mountain air. Pretty cool. Wow. So when you, when you were had rectal bleeding, was that colitis? Were you ever like diagnosed with something specific or did you not even go in to get a diagnosis? No, I, I, I went in, but there was, they didn't really have a, I mean, my was just a family practitioner and, and I think he really knew what it was. Um, he just was like, here, we'll get you on Prilosec and try that. And I just never took the first steps because it was like, Prilosec sounded like alien to me. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I don't know what I had. All I know is that I was pooping rocks and blood was coming out. And it was because I was eating tons of bread and donuts and meat, you know, and I'm not saying meat's bad, but, you know, the blue zones show us that, you know, the four common traits of those people all over the world that lived most to 100, the centurions, yeah, lifelong friends, respect elders, 80% plant-based diet or greater, and they move their body daily. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's success leaves clues again. So we should be just eating fresh foods and lots of plant matter. I actually can't remember this guy's name, but he was a professor at one of these big universities. He got this new microscope and they were checking out all these teeth samples. So brought in all the hominid teeth samples from all over the world and they were doing this big deal. And, and he said that based on what they could tell from the, the wear on the teeth is we ate mostly leafy greens. And it was really cool because they, they worked with the geologists during times of drought and mm -hmm. it lined up because they said there was more pitting in the teeth from eating more seeds and nuts and stuff during dry times. Oh, wow. So we ate mostly plants. But then, you know, we're opportunists and people don't understand that are, you know, driving through a drive through and somebody, you know, you order something, and, you know, five minutes later, somebody hands you a bag of hot food and, you know, then you eat it and you make a bunch of waste in the planet with the bag and throw it out the window, which is kind of a bizarre thing. You it think really about is. It. Yeah, it, it really is like it's like it's it's not natural at all. But, um, you know, I hunt and fish or I used to. Um, I don't really do that anymore, but um, it's not easy going out and harvesting things. I mean, and I'm damn good at it. I was, I mean, like, I mean, I guess it was kind of easy for me, but, but without, without a rifle and without a bow and arrow or a crossbow and, you know, this type of stuff, you know, go out there, get naked, go out and try to catch some animals. It ain't easy. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. just not, it's like, so I mean, we would, we were opportunists and I believe we'd eat a little bit here and there, but we were mostly just eating stuff that wouldn't run away from us. Mm -hmm. Grubs and tubers and seeds and beans and, you know, berries in the fall and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So in your, I know that you have like some deep talks programs, um, that your company offers. Do you want to tell me a little bit about those? Yeah. Um, so what happened was, is I, I just got so inspired with my own change. I'm like, I, when I have something that's good, I'm like the best promoter. I have to tell people yeah. about it. It's the way I work. And so I started telling people and, um, word spread of Charles's story. And, um, he was telling about it he'd send them over to me cause he was busy doing similar stuff. And I had, I, people would start showing up at my house in the middle, like nine o'clock at night, it's dark out. I heard about this story and I, I, I need help. I just been diagnosed with cancer or I've tried everything and the chemo's not working. And they told me to put my affairs in order. These people wow. just started showing up at my house in droves. So after, a, you know, I don't know how many months of doing this, I finally told my wife, I'm like, a date night got ruined because this lady came over with cancer. And I was like, um, I got to help her, you know? So I sat down and told her my story. It all started with my buddy, John, because he came over and he saw the difference. And I, cause I just, cause I lost weight. Yeah. He's like, I want you to grow these sprouts for me. And I'm like, dude, I don't have time to do it. He talked me into doing it. And the next day he brought his friend Eric over and I told Eric my story. He's like, well, you grow sprouts for me. 
dude all right so i started growing for these two guys and these two started telling everybody and before too long i started doing classes every wednesday night just to have some structure to it so i could have a life and then we did those filled up then we did tuesdays and wednesdays and before too long i was teaching at hospitals and churches and grocery stores on the weekends traveling all over the state i wasn't getting paid for any of this i was feeding people for the first two and a half years i didn't even charge them for the food and i'd go to the farmer's markets and i get the best fresh stuff and we make juice and show them how to make a living through dinner. And I teach this class. I just kind of made it up from what I learned at Hippocrates and yeah. what I was learning and doing. And actually I had 5,500 people come through those classes in about a five and a half year period. Wow. And um, I learned a lot from them and they learned a lot from me and I was able to share that with them. And, um, and then finally um, I decided after my little brother died um, that I was going to get out of the financial services industry and I was going to get into the health industry, not knowing what the hell I was going to do. And mm -hmm. so I just started coaching people for free for a while, a year or two. And then I hired a coach and he told me to start charging when I did. And the kind of the rest was history. But as I started building my coaching practice, um, I would do all this research on these supplements. And then six months later, they would change the ingredient. They put xanthan gum in, like, which is an emulsifier. And I'd look it up. And it's like mutated corn syrup, fermented in bacteria used as an emulsifier because you don't want to shake your drink twice because it stops the settling. And I'm like, People are that lazy. They can't shake right, their drink right. twice, you know? Yeah. But xanthan gum also will emulsify the in internal parts of the lining of the intestinal tract. So same thing like gel and gum. So guar gum's good, but stay away from gel and gum and xanthan gum. Well, I don't want freaking xanthan gum in my body. So I was pissed because they switched it on the label and they didn't send me a notice or tell me maybe it was more profitable for them. I don't know what was going on, but I had to call my clients and say, hey, send it back if you got the newer batch because this is what happened. Yeah. And I got sick and tired of freaking doing this process where I do all this research and then they change ingredients. And then I found out it's even worse. They're putting synthetics in products that are even organic because they have a yeast and they force feed the yeast, which is a naturally occurring substance with synthetics. And that way it gets around the laws. And I have to tell you, so it could say organic. So now I'm pissed. I don't trust yep. anything. Yep. So I started my own. I said, I'm going to make this stuff myself. So we started with our green formula, which to replace the nutrition. Then we noticed, you know, oh, we need to help people clean their gut. Yep. Now we got gut detox. Then I learned about chemtrails and all the pollution. Then we created toxin detox formula. And then like, oh, we got to recolonize the bacteria. We created the probiotic spore and prebiotic formula and then digestive enzyme formula. We just put it, but it, but we just kept slowly creating these products. And now I'm launching a product every two or three months now. Wow. We got some really cool stuff coming up. Like I'm a complete nerd and geek on this stuff and we will not compromise anything. I'm the one company. Our formulator, Dr. Scott Treadway, I don't mess with the formulas. I let him actually make them completely naturally occurring, and I don't slip in synthetics or do anything with them because yeah. they're going in me. This stuff, I built it for me and my coaching students. We were just doing little batches. That was all it was. But, you know, word of mouth kind of starts spreading, and people get results. And, and now we're shipping worldwide to thousands of people. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. So I got out of the financial services industry, which is, I was trying to get into that. It's like I can make a million dollars, you know, a, a year. And, and, um, and I was like, I don't care about money anymore. I just want to yeah. help people. My brother's dead and that could have been me. And I want to, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out doing what I love. And it's kind of funny now, eight years later, I'm probably within their five years going to be making more than I was as a financial advisor. Right. And I'm having fun. This yeah. is fun. It's not even work for me. I love sharing this stuff with people and talking to people. And so there's a side note, Follow your excitement in life. It doesn't even have to be a career choice, but mm -hmm. that is the map. That is totally the map. Excitement is the map. Go do that. Whatever you have the best ability to take action on. But um, I don't know. I've just had a really fun time. Um, I've been a living laboratory now for 11 years, uh, 12 years going on. And um, I've got this new strain of probiotics and I make, it's in a, I'm making yogurt now with it. And I know wow. by 10 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to have 250 billion colony forming units and I'm going to start eating half a cup a day. And See what that does See what for happens. me. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there's some really good studies done at MIT on these mice um, that tremendous, tremendous stuff for skin and collagen and increasing testosterone like 400%. And, and so I'm really wow. excited about it. I really love your integrity because I too have followed the path of many companies and, and even restaurants. Like you go to different places or you try a product and I've been uh in different affiliate companies where the products start really great and then it's like my intuition before i even like look at a label and i'm like i don't know something's not something's changed and then it's like yeah you look at it and 
over time, whatever it is, they can't source it. They want to make a profit. So they need extra fillers or whatever the things, or you go to a restaurant that starts out great, but then they need to make a profit. So they start skimping on ingredients, you know, and then it's just, it's, it's really sad because we're, we are so lied to, especially when you're going out to buy things from the stores. And that was one of the biggest amazing teachings that I learned actually when I, I was a um, distributor for, with Arbon for a while, but I, I, I moved away from them, but they taught me so much back in 2013, just about, you know, going the retail store route and how if it says like, it, I always use this example, if it has vitamin C in it, whether it be like something you put on your face or whatever, and it's $4 at like, you know, CVS, how many people need it? And let's say vitamin C just actually costs a lot of money, right? How many yeah. people are in line to get a cut of the profit off of that, right? Going in your normal retail structure, a lot. A lot. So for it to be $4 and let's say vitamin C was really expensive, the percentage of that vitamin C being in your product is like very, Well, let's talk about that. I, I want to share with people how to read labels really quick. It's important. Yeah. Right? So let's say you're, um, you're going to get a good multivitamin and it's a super multivitamin, right? It's got all this cool stuff and it. it's got reishi in it, chaga and mushrooms, and it's got amylase and lipase, a couple of good digestive enzymes. And maybe it's got... Um, lactobacillus uh, acidophilus maybe there's some probiotics and stuff and you're like oh it's got probiotics it's got this it's got that okay and but just look at the go to vitamin c because you brought that up mm -hmm. in parentheses behind it if it says ascorbic acid you're con you're you're consuming a synthetic chemical made in a lab cheaply mm -hmm. it should say if it's a whole food source from the arceola cherry or from the camu camu berry or from uh, my favorite the amla berry which they actually picked those right Mm -hmm. So now you have a whole food source. Now, when it comes in a whole food source, it's going to come into your carbon-based body like a symphony orchestra. You're going to have the woodwinds and the flutes and the horns and the drums, and it's all going to come in, and there's all these bioflavonoids and cofactors, and your body knows what to do with it. But when it comes in ascorbic acid, it's a synthetic acid-based chemical into your carbon-based body, and, and synth acid and carbon do not mix. So you might get an effect, but it's not going to be – it's not natural because mm -hmm. you're natural. You, you are nature. So that's one thing to look out for. Check your labels there. But here's the other thing. These, I, I mentioned the yeast thing, which is just diabolical. Right? They don't have to tell you on the label. But check the other ingredients as well because other ingredients are still ingredients. You're ingesting these things. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times they put these things, they're under the umbrella. Of, it's called excipients, binders, fillers, and flow agents. So let me explain these three things. Mm -hmm. The binders are when they make like tablets. And they put these substances in there to hold the materials together. It binds it, right? Well, there's. I, I had a friend before I even got into this work. He owned a porta potty business, actually a client friend, and um, he showed me. He's like, "Hey, check this out." And it's like, Psh, and he's spraying all the poop away. Guess what was left over? Thousands of vitamins. Thousands, and you could you could see like, you know, Centrum Twenty One or whatever, right on. Yeah, yeah. So people are buying this stuff. And it's it's not even dissolving. It's not even doing anything. Yeah, it's crazy. So, and, but even if it, but if it did dissolve, there's, it's toxic, right? So, um, or they'll do, um, uh, 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 uh fillers, right? Mm -hmm. Cause when you put a synthetic in there, it doesn't really take a whole lot of room up in a capsule cause it doesn't take that much. So Americans are not going to buy like empty capsules. They're going to give me my money back. This is a rip off. So they fill them up, right? That's another thing. They'll use them as a filler. And the other thing they use them as is in the manufacturing process is flow agents. This is to, for, to make the raw materials flow through their encapsulation machines without caking up. This is great for speed of production and profitability, but not really good for your health if it's toxic. Three of the main culprits are magnesium stearate, silicon dioxide, and dicalcium phosphate. I encourage everybody, and I challenge you to go check your labels. Magnesium stearate actually cancels digestion and absorption. Why would you eat food or take a supplement and put di and put that in there if it cancels digestion? Yeah. Doesn't that kind of counteract what you're trying to accomplish? You're trying to get digestion. Same, you want these nutrients in the cell and right. it blocks it. Yep, into the body. Yeah. Silicon dioxide is a level three toxin on the EPA's toxin list, yet it's in most supplements. So this is where I'm like, I try to make things easy. Mm -hmm. 
if you had if your mother had the best brownie recipe in the world like and she just won the state fair and now she's going or she won the county fair and now she's going to state fair and then she won that and now she's going to nationals and you come by her house and you're like hey mom what are you doing she's like oh i'm making some brownies hey can i have one sure and you're just reaching down to grab it and she's like but well, hold on a second i just want to let you know something this batch is a little bit different than the normal batch i'm like well what's different about it? well it's the exact same formula or same recipe and everything but i put just one little ingredient it's a little bit different you won't even notice it's there you won't taste it you literally won't even know it's there well what is it mom you're holding the brownie in your hand. You're about to take a bite of this delicious brownie. She's like, well, I put in just a little teeny bit, not much, but a tiny little bit of cat poop. And you're going to be like, Ugh. you're going to drop that brownie. You're not going to eat it. Why? Because it's freaking gross. Yeah. Okay. And that little bit has ruined the entire recipe. And that's the way I look at these binders, fillers, and flow agents. If you have something that's toxic or impedes digestion and absorption of nutrients, it's like cat poop in the brownie recipe. Mm -hmm. the rest of the supplement look good. You might have, you might even have omelet berry and all this other stuff and great right. herbs and all this stuff, but it taints it. So right. I've pretty, I've helped over a dozen companies. Uh, Cause I've been interviewed quite a bit. And I told these other owners, I said, Hey, just letting you know, it's like, you've got uh, dicalcium phosphate in your supplement or silicon dioxide. And that's, that's, that's terrible. It's like, and they're like, what it is because they might've even hired a formulator made a good formula, but then they sent it off to the manufacturing lab. And as long as it's under the, guidelines yeah you know the gmp practices so it's it's approved by the fda it's good to go well it's not as far yeah. as i'm concerned so anyway people just really need to learn how to read labels and i would just strongly urge them to stay away from buying any supplements in big grocery stores or boxes unless you actually know the brand like you know one company biosil which is a call mm -hmm. it's like a silly you can get that in grocery stores. That's a good product. Okay, you can get I that. Actually, there. I use BioCell. I like BioCell. It's one yeah, of the few I actually one. buy out there. What's that? That's probably actually the only one I buy from a grocery store. Yeah, it's it's hard to find any of them because they've been corrupted. And here's a fun way and an easy way to tell if they've probably been corrupted. Just type in, and I don't want to get sued or nothing, but what you do is type in to your browser if you want to find out if the company you're buying from is cool. Who purchased and then put it the company's name in. Like, mm -hmm. who purchased Garden of Life? Right. And they'll tell you, Nestle. Yeah. Who and purchased like, New hmm. Chapter? Procter & Gamble, right? Mm -hmm. So just, just type that in, and then you can come to your own conclusion. So right. whatever company you want to just, who purchased? And if the big boys bought them out, I'm out. I'm yep. out. I'm exactly. Out. Yeah, and I wanted to touch on those umbrella words, because in personal care products, in our food, in you know, flavoring is an umbrella word that they can hide whatever they want underneath it. Um, natural flavoring. If you see natural, natural flavoring, yep. run to the door. Don't run. Walk. It's 70% um, of it. By, or wait, no, 90% for the last 70 years can be synthetic. Only 10% has to be natural. That's the way the law is written. Wow. Natural yeah. flavor. So you get this young mother. I see this stuff all the time in the grocery store and I'm getting ready to check out. And she's got all this garbage in her shopping cart. I'm like, oh my God. And I remember she had this lactose, uh, you know, dairy-free, um, stuff, a dairy product. And I said, Hey, are you lactose intolerant? She's like, yeah. I'm like that cheese has dairy in it. She's like, no, it's dairy free. I said, flip it over. Look at the ingredients. Casein. Casein is a, the main protein in dairy. She's like, Oh my God. She's like, no wonder I'm not getting better. And she was pissed. Wow. She was madder than a hornet because she just didn't know. Right. Because the front of the package so what's so bad today is you, I tell people never read the front of the package. That's a sales job. You'd be like yeah. wild rice. And then you go home and then it's the first ingredients, brown rice. And then you sprinkle a little wild rice in there. Right. You see this stuff all the time. Yeah. But now it's even worse. They have labeling laws. They don't have to tell you what's in it. I mean, did you know that most children's cereals have, besides the high fructose corn syrup and the synthetic vitamins, they call enriched, vi enriched with vitamins. It's enriched with synthetic chemicals. Mm -hmm. They actually have chemists on staff to put opiate derivatives into the children's cereal to further addict them that's not on the freaking label are you serious i haven't heard that one it's terrible it's wow. really bad and they have high fructose corn syrup yeah a lot of this stuff has uh, glyphosate in it and glyphosate has heavy metals in it it's a binder mm -hmm. it's just it's just endless no so it, it really is endless we have to get back to fresh that's it grow your own freaking food sprout <laughs> in your home go to your local farmers markets go to your produce manager have them start bringing sprouts in and, and just start getting fresh food in you. That's the most important thing.
That is the most important thing. It, it, it really is kind of, um, I'm finding this year on my show is all about my guests and um, just I pre previous uh, seasons, I, I was just getting my wheels going and I did a lot of shows on my own, but this year is all, all about bringing people in. And, and a lot of the topics and conversations with everyone um, is, is really coming back to, to that, growing our own food, community, being sustainable, um, I was just in uh, Big Bear, California a couple weeks ago at this thing called the Anawa Gathering. Normally they would do it on the East Coast. This was the first year they did it on the West Coast and they brought 40 indigenous elders from around the world to come and do ceremonies and talks. And it was the most beautiful thing I've ever um, experienced thus far um, on that level. And, and every single one of them talked about the importance of like getting us back to in ourselves, with the earth, where's our food coming from, who's preparing it, what energy is behind it, what, you know, even if you're living in a city, what are you buying into, what are you being a part of on just like, on every level, when it comes to our food, what we're watching, what we're seeing, what we're engaging in, and really starting to, we need to unwind from these things, because one of the teachers really said, we're not, we're not, we can still reverse it. It's not where we've gone as humanity and, and how much we've destroyed and chemically filled this earth. And he really talked about um, one of the reasons why suicide is so big as well is he's like, we live in a garbage dump. He's like the spirit that doesn't even want to be in this chemically filled world, the soils, the water, everything. Um, and it, it's really just really coming back to in his land in Brazil, he's, uh, starting a center to teach people how to like begin to come back and build these self-sustainable communities really easily so that no matter where they live in the world, they can start coming back to growing their own food and knowing that the right energy is put into it, the right ingredients, the right soil and everything, because this disconnection has, you know, this is what the disconnection has done is made us not even knowing what we're putting in our bodies and blindly trusting you know, whatever they're throwing in front of you and them just telling you that this is right without even knowing to fully stop and research and read a label and slow down and, you know, mm -hmm. grow your own stuff. So it's, it, it's a lot of a conversation this year that people are really starting to wake up to, or just even having the conversation again of the importance of, of that. Well, the bottom line is that people are just not happy. Yeah. And you yeah. should be, you should wake up and be happy and excited about life and have be full of energy. You should wake up and feel good mm -hmm. and be excited about the day. And what, the, what can I create today? What can I, what do I get to go do? And a lot of people are like, Oh, eh, 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 eh. hit the snooze button eh, eh. and they get up, they got to drag their ass out of bed, stimulate themselves with a bunch of mold filled, toxic coffee, and then mm -hmm. do five hour energy drinks, do all this stuff. Um, get testosterone injections, B12 shots, Botox, all this weird stuff, butt yep. cheek implants. I mean, we're getting way off. Yeah. Like it's just weird yeah. what people are doing. Yeah. Um, and by the way, if you put, um, anything into your body like that, you're creating a permanent systemic 24 hour infection, internal infection. So that's like when I had this one gal and she, she was very, had some serious health issues. And this is right in the beginning of my journey. I just was sharing everything with her that I was doing and she just did it all the diet, the saunas. I mean, she was just like all of it. Mm -hmm. She, she got a lot better, but she couldn't quite heal. She was a small gal and I, she had huge breasts. And I was like, finally, I said, I said, Carolyn, do you like, um, you have breast implants, right? You have fake boobs. And she's like, yeah, how'd you know? I'm like, well, you're little and they're big. I yeah. said, you need to get them out. And she's like, mm, I've had them in for 18. And she goes, I don't want to do that. And I said, look, if you were really serious about healing, which I know she was, I said, you have to get them out. Here you go. And I handed her a book by Dr. Susan Kolb called The Naked Truth About Breast Implants. I was already prepared. Oh. I'd done my research for her ahead of time. Uh -huh. And um, I said, you need to go meet with her, have a consult, fly to Atlanta, and get the surgery and get them removed. Because when your body, when you get a sliver in your finger, what happens? Your body creates an infection and it pushes the sliver out. Yep. That's your immune system. It's healing you. When you have a breast implant or a butt cheek implant, which yeah. is the so, I can't even believe I'm saying calf, this. There's calf implants too. Don't, don't forget yeah, or those a, ones. a calf implant or Botox, which has known carcinogens in it. Yeah. You're literally causing a, or a bladder sling, like just any foreign objects in the body. 
it creates a 24 seven infection. Here's another wow. one that people are probably not going to like hearing, but it's good. I tell people what they need to know, not what they want to hear. Yeah. If you have a root canal, it needs to be pulled ASAP. Yeah. Every single root canal is infected. And you're like, well, my tooth doesn't hurt at all. It's fine. You wait till it's pulled. You'll see. I've had clients, I've told this, I've had clients pulling their teeth all over the country and haven't even bothered him. And they pull it out and they're like, dude, they sent me pictures. It was all infected. When you get a root canal, they go in there, they, they, the, the dentists are coming up to you. They're going to say, hey, I got good news and bad news. Well, what's, what do you want to hear first? Well, what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is, is that your tooth is pretty much jacked um, and, you know, needs to be pulled. What's the good news? Well, I can save it with a root canal. What do you want to do? Do the root canal. You just signed up for a permanent 24-7 systemic infection that's going to lower your immune system. Mm -hmm. Your immune system is going to have to deal with it. In your mouth and you, your teeth, you have these things called dental tubules. In the front teeth, they're about two to three miles long. In the back teeth, they're about eight to nine, seven to nine miles long. These microscopic tubules that bacterium can stack about six wide in, and they just start filling up with infection, right? And then sometimes they put mercury in there with it and all that stuff. They can't get it all out. So then it just grows and grows and grows. And then it starts spilling over into your immune system. And then it lowers your immune system. You get tired and fatigued. Or it could be the straw that broke the camel's back. And then all of a sudden you get cancer or Hashimoto's or MS right. or whatever. It's going to show itself because your immune system is a, it's like an army, Navy Marines. And if the Marines are over there dealing with something else, they're not dealing with the cancer, right? As an right. example. So, yeah. You know, these are things that people have to look at. We have to get this, we have to get stuff cleaned up. So these the implants and stuff like that to me is just anything that's not nature. Again, there's lies the, the biggest problem. So we have to be smart about this. And I actually had a gal that had a, a bladder sling issue. She hadn't slept for more than 15 minutes in over seven years. Think about that. Oh my she was God. exhausted. She finally called me up just desperate. She's like, Tim, I have to sleep. I'm going to, I just want to die. I want to die. And I was like, well, um, only thing I know that could help you is maybe, you know, hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So mm -hmm. go do that, that, and she did, and it worked, it worked so well that she bought one, but she wasn't get to the root of the problem when she has that bladder sling. I said, Ellen, you got to get that bladder sling out of there. You got to get it out. She's like, they don't do it. I said, keep talking to doctors, find another, talk to 50,000 doctors, talk to all of them until you find one. She finally did about a year later. She found a doctor. They all said, no, you can't take them out. And two weeks after, by the way, when she got that bladder sling came in, to her after her surgery, the doctor told her, yeah, we discontinued those. We're no longer putting them in because they cause problems in people. And then they, and she's like, what? So she found this doctor, this lady, and she's like, oh, yeah, I take those out all the time. I, that's my sweet spot. So she got it out. She wow. was in the e, uh, ER. No, not in the ER. She was in the uh, what's what's where after the ER. I see you. Yeah, she's in the ICU. She's like, give me my phone. Do, 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 do. My phone rings. Hey, Tim. I guess what? I was like, what? She goes, I just got my bladder sling out and I already feel better. I have more, I have, my energetics are better. And I was like, that's awesome. And she started, she started sleeping. It was a bladder sling. You know, she was trying to do all this other stuff, right? So putting foreign stuff into your body, probably not the best idea. Yeah. Probably not the best idea. You should probably just love yourself how you are. Yeah. If you don't like how you look, get healthy from the inside out, go to the gym, get outside, do some push ups, whatever you need to do, and change yourself then. But to yeah. put in the work. Absolutely. So I don't want to take up more of your time and honor on our time here. Um, we talked about you were going to offer anyone listening to get 5% off if they shop your products. And you also mentioned you're going to be, is that right? You're going to be coming out with an affiliate affiliate um, marketing here soon. When, yep. when, when, do, when, when are you projected on that? Well, the, Sunday, we should have the system in place. Then Amazing. Wow. one of my team members will be trained on it the following week or two, and then we're going to start enrolling people. Oh, cool. It's like here. Yeah. We're just right around the corner. Amazing. So if, yeah, if people want to check out what we're doing, um, our website is chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. I also have a podcast called The Health Hero Show. So there's a lot of free information right there. If you kind of, you know, because I know I, I've just talked to a lot of people and they're like, there's a lot of scammers online nowadays, right? Yeah. So the show's there because I just want to give information to people. I I do a lot of deep dives solo, but I also have lots of guests, and I've learned a lot from the guests too, and and mm -hmm. tried stuff out and implemented it. And 
So you can kind of get to know me a little bit better over there um, before you make a purchase. If that's if you're kind of like, oh, who is this dude? Is he trying to rip me off? So, um, but if you're feeling good and we're vibing here and you're like, wow, I want to try some of his stuff, I'd probably just go to the shop tab, scroll down to where it says savings bundles. That way you can get a discount. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we have like a little jump start bundle if you want to stick your toes in the water or I, I do what's called the total energy and detox bundle. And then I also take our tincture products. So we have a turmeric that's, it's pretty awesome. Like these tinctures are, they actually go through the mucous membrane in the mouth and then directly into the bloodstream and directly into the cell. So it bypasses wow. digestion. They're hyper absorbable and they're super powerful. There is, it literally took turmeric and made it 185 times more anti-inflammatory. We saw, we saw, I saw a study where they took 63 people and did this process. And I took it to my formula. I said, Scott, look at what they're doing with inflammation. Cause I'm all about reducing inflammation. Cause I, especially yes. with my knees from trail running. He's like, I said, can we do this? He goes, yeah, we can do that, but we have to purchase one of those machines. They're very expensive. I said, let's do it. So we started with the turmeric product and now we're popping out these tinctures. So what's cool is I was actually able to create uh, the second one. I was able to put six products in one because of the, the delivery. I need way less of it yes. because it's not going through digestion. It's going right into the cell. So wow. we were able to get like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D3, zinc, quercetin, and fulvic and humic, a full mineral complex, literally six products all in one, super powerful. Everything right, so, we need right now to keep that immune system healthy, right? Yeah, well, it was, yeah, we built it by design, right? So, yeah, and, and it's, it's really cool stuff. So anyway, just pick whatever you want, pick a bundle, whatever um, that fits your budget or, you know, whatever. I mean, one product doesn't really matter. Just get started. And then at checkout, put in the code CREATRIX and you get an additional 5% off. So you guys can actually get a double discount. So make sure Amazing. you put in that code CREATRIX. And yes. then we have a double your money back guarantee on all of our products. So you probably won't find that anywhere else um, because I know they're, they're going to work for 98% of you up the middle. If they don't call us up and get on the phone with myself or another one of the coaches and we'll, because the products that we have are just part of our toolkit. Mm-hmm. This is like, I'm not saying like, take my stuff and you're, you know, it's like, go, go work out once and you're going to be healthy for life. It's like, no, you're our right. products are damn good. Okay. I built them. They're some of the best supplements on the planet. I mean, I've had to really own that. And I've been stepping into that in the last six months because I just, I don't want people to think I'm like some braggart or something, but like we work hard and like we, these, this stuff is, we have some of the best, most powerful supplements that are naturally occurring on the planet. And I put my money where my mouth is. It's a double your money back guarantee because yeah. I know they're going to work. And if they don't, yeah. we'll refund your money and then we'll just, you know, put, find something else, even if it's another product, it's another company. We know how to look through their labels and show you which ones are good, but then you got to keep your eye on them because they might change it. Right. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we're all about. And we have coaching VIP one-on-one stuff. And then I also lead a group coaching community on Wednesdays, which I'll be doing tonight, 6 PM Pacific, 9 PM Eastern. I, I lead a group of people and we just, I teach a topic and then I do live Q and A. So people just amazing. And, and they can Q&A. find that all on your website too, of how to sign into that. Yeah, and I'll give them a little, I'll give them two other bonus gifts. So the um, number one is when you go to the site and you're looking around, this little pop-up comes up and it says, hey, would you like a free gift? That's actually our core four secrets manual. There's four hmm. basic things that you can do at home right now. That re- and Well, three of them are completely free. One of them, you might have to spend a couple bucks. It's about getting your water right. Okay. There's recipes in there. And my best gastrointestinal liquid uh, recipe is in there to help heal the gut. It's amazing. You can get that core for secrets manual for free, but I have tons of manual manuals and all that kind of stuff. And also when you make your first purchase, you're going to get one chance to join the group at an 80% discount. Normally it's a couple hundred, it's like 197 a month for the group, but you can get grandfathered in at $37 if you elect to move forward with it at the time of purchase. But after that, you won't see it again. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. This has been so beautiful and I'm so excited to try out new products and like it, it, to even just be able to speak with you one-on-one. Cause yeah, I feel like the market is so saturated with so much stuff is like, you don't know who's bullshitting anymore and who's real. And, and like, I, I really feel your energy of like your integrity in this. And it's really cool because my friends and I, I come from a very big spiritual community here in Los Angeles and outward um, around the world. And we're always really looking for what's the cleanest, highest vibrational thing. And the people we want to work with that stand in their integrity and are, you know, going towards better and getting out of this crap. 
so it's it's really been beautiful to meet you and sit with you today well, that's and, awesome and have you share that's your awesome. story i gotta tell you when i was searching for formulators i was asking all these different labs and stuff do you have curly in photography do you know what that is no it measures the energetics of stuff it's really cool so you can look at ascorbic acid vitamin c versus naturally occurring and the, the patterns glowing and different you can oh, show wow. a six-year-old that and every time you're like which one do you like better and they'll They'll pick the natural six year olds know to pick it, right? Yeah. I also saw it on its live video too. So there was like this grandpa on a rocking chair and he had like his four year old granddaughter, grandson running around him. It was like a Haley's, like a comet tail of energy behind the little kid. And then when the kid jumped in grandpa's lap and they actually touched, both their frequencies went up. Like wow. you see him running on the beach. So curling photography actually measures the energetic. So when I, when I knew about this and I asked all these labs, do you know what curling photography is? And they all like turned their head sideways like a dog. They you know what I was talking about. But when I met Dr. Treadway, I said, do you have curling photography? He's like, oh yeah, we have a couple of those units. And I said, really? And he's like, do you measure? He's like, yeah, we, can, we measure the supplements because we want to make sure that through the processing is so minimal that we're still keeping the enzymes and the life force involved. Yeah. So our products, that's why our greens, we tell people don't blend it. Because blending mm -hmm. in 90 seconds will kill 85 to 92% of the nutrition from the high speeds and the oxidization, yep. the wind tunnel, and it mm -hmm. heats things up. So blend whatever you're going to make first, put greens in later, and sh our greens, and then Stir spoon it, it in or shake it up or something or lightly. Yeah. Just don't blend it because okay. you're missing out on what we work so hard to retain for you, which is as much as that energetic. Because we are, I mean, as I thought as woo-woo as it could be, but this lady at Hippocrates said, Tim, you're a, a living light being. And I thought she was nuts. I thought, well, this gal's lost it. But then yeah. I learned that these biophotons come down from the sun. They're captured on the leaf of a plant, and they create electrons. And when we eat the living food of a plant, those electrons transfer into our body. We are living light beings. Yes. It's freaking crazy. So she I was know. right. I was wrong. Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for having me on the show. And um, wait, once we get our skincare stuff, uh, uh, skin food stuff done, it's edible. Um, you'll have to have me back on. We'll chat about that. A hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've looked at it and I like to take things and make them super natural, super effective, and then also simplify it. So I have like a two-step process for people's skincare routine now. That's amazing. Cause yeah, like I said, my community is all about all the things that are, that are the most pure and good for us and high vibrational. And yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone watching and listening. And we'll talk with you again soon. Bye.